Welcome back to my 40th TV series. Today we're going to take a look at a scrap happy quilt. Before we get to our main project, uh, Joan Hawley has returned to share with us some tips and techniques. Hi Joan. Hi Kay, how are you? I'm great. What are you going to share with us today? I have a couple of wonderful turning and pressing tips to make the most of our designs. Well good. So let's start with this project on our little backpack here. We have a patch pocket out front. Okay. And I have a great way to turn those right sides out and get nice even uh, edges all the way around. Sounds great. So let's set this aside. All right. Now here's our goal. We have a patch pocket. This is our project. As you can see, we have a really nice crisp edge all the way around. And I'm going to show you how we do that. Now to construct this, we just took a piece of fabric, folded it in half, and stitched leaving an opening where we're going to turn it through. Okay. Here's where the magic's going to happen. Now let me move this out of the way so we can see what we're doing. And this is fantastic. You know, if we were to try to turn this without doing any preparation, it might, the opening might buckle out. Right. Mm -hmm. But we want it to turn under the same as our seam allowance. Okay. So we're going to separate our seam allowance and just by hand, if you can get in there and do a little finger pressing, and get it started before we turn. And do that for both sides of that opening. So it's starting to look pretty good, isn't it? It is. And if we just give it a little tug, look how nice it's that's. straight across. Straight across, and so we're just gonna manipulate it with our finger fingers a little bit. Hold it in place, and if you have an iron handy, whether it's a small one like this, or a full-size iron, just give it a little press, and we're going to do each half of that seam allowance at once. So we'll turn it over and do the same thing with the other seam allowance. And we're going to end up with a wonderful crisp edge when we turn this right sides out. So nobody will know where the opening is. I know. And if you're, if you're working with a really long opening, you might want to have some assistance from something as simple as a folded piece of paper. Just put that right behind our seam. Oh, okay. And that gives us a little support. Good idea. So when we turn this right sides out, our seam allowance is gonna be sharp from edge to edge. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. And to turn it right sides out, we just reach in, put our finger at the corner, and turn. And do that for all four corners. And you can take some time and do this really nicely works on any size project, works with all fabrics. And here we go, we're gonna straighten it out. And here's our opening. And doesn't that look nice? It sure does. Now we have some buckle here on the sides. Mm -hmm. Again, if you have that small iron, you can just go right in and press along the seam and push it out from the inside and oh, iron neat. it at the same time. Uh huh. So just work your way around the block, doing each edge, and take your time. And then when you're done, give it a nice little adjustment. Don't be afraid to use steam, and you can press the whole thing. Okay. Easy as can be. So that's how we turn a, pro a patch pocket. Now some of our projects use a pocket that go from edge to edge and get sewn into the side seams. Mm -hmm. So all we really need is a piece of fabric folded in half. And this time it's wrong sides together. And this time, that's right, we made a tube and we need to turn it and press it. And here's what's so special about this pressing. We have the seam just past the edge. And what that does for us is gives us a nice clean finish with no buckle on both edges. Okay, so you, you uh, sewed it together uh, just like this, okay. just like this. Right sides together. That's right, and before we turn it, just reach in and separate the layers. And we're gonna center that seam. So we can just go in by hand 
and manipulate it open. And again, if you have a small iron, that's fantastic. And if not, just finger press it, because we just want to start it. We just want to start that pressing. And then to turn it, this is so easy. Just gather it up on your fingers and your thumbs. And when you get to the end, grab a hold and pull through. And there we go. So between our hands and our iron, we can get a really nice crisp pressing and fold all the way along our seam. So we're just gonna give it a little heat there to warm it up. Cause you know, our fabric retains the heat. Okay. And that makes it real easy to work with. And then just scooch it so that the seam is toward the edge, but not on the edge. And if you'll take the large iron, we can press this from side to side. And we have a nice, even, perfect pocket with good edges from end to end. That is and really it's, neat. It's little tips like this that really make the most of our projects. Well, it makes them more fun because it, they always work and it simplifies things, doesn't it? It does. And we have one more quick tip. If you'll take that bag, sometimes when we finish making a fabric bag, it can look a little sloppy, but we can always give it a good pressing and I wanted to show you how. We want to reinforce the design lines. So for here, for this bag, we're gonna reinforce from corner to corner, mm -hmm. lay our bag flat, and if you'll grab the iron and just press. And that'll do it. That'll do it. And if you work your way around each design element of the bag, flip it over and do it on the back as well. Okay, well I wanna thank you, Joan. These are neat tips that are just gonna make our life easier. Thank you, Kay. And let's go over and join Lynn. I'd like you to help me welcome back my guest. This is Lynn Steinmetz. Hi, Lynn. How Hi. are you? Hi, Kay. Thank you for having me today. I understand we're going to work <clears throat> with scraps and lots of scraps. Lots of scraps. So if you've got fabric that you've got left over from other projects, we're going to use it up. I think we've got a little <laughs> bit of that. <laughs> okay, how do we get started? Well, first you'd want to pick your focus fabric. Um, choose something that you want to use, something that you have a large piece of, okay, if you've got large scraps. Um, for this example, we're using the, the green uh, batik print here. And then choose your scraps according to your focus fabric. Pick okay. out all your scraps out of your stash that kind of pull in the colors that are in your, your focus fabric. How many fabrics are you looking at? You can use as many as 30. You can oh, really? use as few as, you know, here I've got uh, fat quarters, and I just dripped up a couple fat quarters. I think I used five total in the quilt. Um, but if you've got strips and scraps left over from lots of projects, use them all up. Okay, so as long as they're in the color range that you want. Yeah, if you're planning a colored, color uh, concentrated quilt, then you want to do that. If you want a strictly scrappy, you can throw anything in there. Okay. <laughs> anything goes. All right, how do we get started? <clears throat> okay, so once you have your scraps all set up, what you want to do then is cut them into strips. Okay. We're going to cut them from one inch all the way up to two and a half inch in half inch increments. All right. So. Um, once you cut your strips, then they're going to look like this. And from one inch, as small as one inch, all the way up to one and a, two and a half inch um, by the length of your fabric. Okay. If you're strictly using truly scraps, you're going to have different lengths of strips. And that's okay. That's okay. As long as they're uh, uh, approximately 14 inches, you want them to be at least that long. Okay. Um, when you got your strips all cut, they're going to look like this. <laughs> Okay, looks looks like a uh, pile in my sewing pile of room. Spaghetti. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is what my sewing room looks like normally. Um, what you want to do is just make things very random. You don't want to have a lot of control in this process. So um, what I do is usually just pile them in, in a pile like this by my sewing machine. Um, you could throw them in a paper bag and just pull them out randomly that way too. That would work. For those of us with control issues, I like to be able to see what I'm pulling out of the pile. <laughs> Maybe you need to have it in a paper bag then. <laughs> I think probably. I just can't quite get there yet. But then once you have your strips all set next to your sewing machine, you just start pulling strips out of the pile and start sewing them together. As long so as they're 14 inches. As long as they're at least 14 okay. inches. So you're going to sew your strips right sides together. Let's just pull two here and, and just show. I would just pick two of different sizes. I'd try not to do the same size next to the same size. 
and put your next strip on, right sides together, and sew along the long line. What you're basically doing is creating a large piece of fabric. Okay. You want to create it so it's all strippy, scrappy, mm -hmm. but it's one large piece of fabric. So you would continue sewing your strips together until your piece of fabric would measure about 14 inches wide. So you want it at least 14 by 14. Okay. Better if it's a little longer, even, because then we can use that extra end piece, too. Um, one tip when you are pressing these, when you sew your strip on, and then you go to press, the best way to do it is to take your iron and just lightly push that top strip over. Because what we're going for is a strip set that looks like this. Let's move these. Okay. <clears throat> we're going for a strip set that looks like these. And if you start aggressive ironing, then you're going to get a C-shaped strip. You don't want that bow or that bend in the strip set. You want to keep them nice and straight. So by taking that top strip, and just pressing it over with the iron very gently, you'll keep your strip set straight so okay. you don't have that, so you don't have curves in your scrap happy quilt. We don't, don't do curved piecing okay. on this quilt. Okay, no <laughs> curves. <laughs> so once we've got our strip set made and it's at least 14 inches wide and 14 inches long, the reason for the size is because the paper that we use to make the triangles is approximately that I size. I see, okay. We want it as big as the paper. Okay, we're gonna go in five. All right, then we take our focal fabric, and our focal fabric we've cut to the same size as our grid on a paper. So what we're going to do then is place the focal fabric right sides together with our strip set. Okay. Line up those edges. Um, a good thing to do at this point is to run a basting stitch because we're going to work mainly with the top layer of the fabric, and we don't want that back layer to flip underneath. Okay, this is what you're calling the top layer. This is the top okay. layer. Mm -hmm. So I would take this to the machine and just run a basting stitch along the edges. Okay. Just to make sure that that back layer doesn't roll under. And then bring the paper back in mm -hmm. and line it up on here and iron it down with a hot dry iron. The paper's gonna stick right to this top fabric. Oh, okay. And it just clings right to it. And the, the reason then for the basting stitch is it's not sticking to that back fabric strip set. So we, we wanna make sure that that doesn't flip underneath. So then what you have is a piece that looks like this. Okay. Okay, you can see the basting stitches along the edge, and then the paper is ironed down. Once you get the paper on, then all the dotted lines are printed right on the paper. So all you have to do is just take it to your sewing machine, set your stitch length a little bit smaller because you want to perforate the paper, and then just sew on all the dotted lines. Okay, let's bring this in again. Here we've got the dotted lines, and the, that's where you this stitch. Is, yeah, this is okay. already stitched and ready to go. All right. Once you do that, then we need to start cutting this apart. So um, if you can hand me the, the rotary cutter. And what you're going to do is use a rotary cutter <laughs> and a ruler. And you want to cut on all the solid lines on the paper. So basically what I'm going to do is cut the edges off first. Okay. I'm just going to line this up. The ruler does slide a little bit on the paper, so you have to make sure you've got a really nice good grip on it. Cut right through the paper and the fabric, and then cut your side edges off. And this is a precision thing, so you want to make sure that you are right on that black line. Um, we have a, a, another step that's not quite so precision related, and I'll talk about that when we get to that part. But this one's critical. This one's critical. You don't want to slide over and miss those lines. So we're going to cut all four sides, trim them. Okay, I'm going to trim all those sides off, and then just for lack of time, we'll leave that one on. And I'm just going to cut now on this solid line in the center and cut the paper apart into squares. Again, another critical cut, so you want to make sure you're right on that line. This we can set aside, we won't be needing. And then cut this one. The paper, because it's ironed on to the fabric, really acts as a stabilizer, and it keeps things from getting wrinkled, rumpled. Mm -hmm. and moving around. So what you get then from a sheet of paper is four triangles that look like this. Okay. They're sewn on either side of that diagonal line. And so now we need to cut it apart on that diagonal line. That's the non-critical cut, I call it, because it's just seam allowances okay. in that mm -hmm. area. Um, so if you do slide a little bit on that cut, it's not going to hurt anything. It's those first main cuts that you really, really, really want to be careful with. 
Okay, I'll let you have one. Okay. This is what they look like then. They're mm -hmm. large triangle pieces with the paper on. And now because we've stitched real close together, the paper is gonna remove really easily. So what you wanna do is just bend it first on the stitching line. Okay. And then if you hold it like this. Okay. And pull this little piece off and it just kinda zips right down that little seam allowance. Oh, okay. Comes off really easily. And then this other piece just pops right off at the corner. At the corner, all right. And just peel it off. I usually have my husband or my kids do that part. Oh, good <laughs> idea. <laughs> Although the kids are teenagers, then it's not cool anymore. So when you open this up then, what you have is a triangle. This is actually an extra little piece because of the seams on the, oh, okay. on the strippy fabric. I'm just gonna just trim that off right there. Okay. So what you have then are triangle units that look like this. So and they're, they're all different. They're all different. Everything is different because your strip sets are all different. Okay. You, you use the random sizes, the random colors of fabric. So you would press these. Which way? I would press them with the seam allowance toward the focus fabric. You want me to do that? Sure, you can do that. Okay. <clears throat> there we go. And again, it's a nice, easy press, but because you've sewn on that bias line already, you don't have to really worry too much about stretching or anything like that. Okay, here All right. we go. You just continue that process for six pages worth. You do six <laughs> pages of the paper. All right, to get the number of squares right, you need. Right, to get the number of squares to make the blocks. This is extra. We can All right. You do want to save this extra piece. Um, what we're going to use this for is we're going to cut strips to make the borders. Oh, okay. So, so it helps if it is wider than 14 inches. Exactly. If you're using yardage and you want to make your strips 42 inches long, mm -hmm. you can do that and that'll give you enough extra to make lots of border good, strips. Good, good. So what we, what we do with all the extra pieces then, um, excuse me, I'm sorry. There we go. Is we're just going to use the ruler and the cutter and we're going to cut this edge off straight here. I use the lines on the ruler and line it up with the seam lines on the fabric just to make sure that your strips are straight. And they look pretty good. And I'm just gonna make this cut here. And then flip it around and cut three and a half inches. And then that'll be our strip set. Okay. Let me see. Oh, this has a half inch on the edge, doesn't it? Three and a half? Mm-hmm. Okay. And just cut again here. That way, when you're making your borders, you're not sewing all these little three and a half inch pieces together. Good idea. So that gives you the extra pieces to then to make your borders. So, okay. More stuff. More stuff, stuff to get rid, get rid of. of. Okay. More scraps for another quilt. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so once you get your squares all made, then you have pieces that look like this. And you're gonna lay them out um, like the blocks in the quilt. Okay. So this over here. So the block looks like this. You want your four pieces laid out and you want your diagonal lines to make a square in the center of the block. Okay. And you want two with your strip set facing in and two with your focus fabrics facing in. Oh, okay. Okay, mm -hmm. that's how they're laid out. And then what you would do is put them right sides together, stitch them together into pairs. This one's already stitched press it, and if you press it toward the focus fabric, there's less seams here, so it's not so bulky. You know, it, it's really interesting when you had these out here, I just want to put it back. Mm -hmm. it, it looks like this is a, like a sashing strip. It does. Because it's a really thin strip. It does, and you'll wind up with thin ones and fat ones on the edge, and I tried to put the wider strips out on the edges of those strip sets, because you're gonna have a quarter inch seam allowance in there and that seam allowance might make this seam a little bulky. So try to keep those blocks a little bit okay. away from that. So once you've made all your pairs, actually all your pairs are identical to this. They're just, every other one is upside down to make the block. So you would sew those other two blocks to this unit to mm -hmm. make the, the large block. Here's a finished block. Now because we've sewn the seam, or excuse me, pressed the seam allowances toward the focus fabric, on this pair we've pressed the seam this way. On this pair, we've pressed the seam this so way. So we just continue that toward the focus. So when you put these two together, then your seams nest together really nicely and they lock together at the intersection of your block so you get really nice points. 
Um, you can pin if you if you choose to pin. Um, I'm kind of a renegade. I don't pin very much. I don't either. <laughs> it's, that happens how it happens. Yeah. But another good thing that you want to happen is the corners of this diagonal should come out a quarter inch from the outside edge of the block because when you sew your next piece on there, you're going to use that quarter inch seam allowance. And so we're actually going to lose this piece We're going to lose much. probably pretty much of that piece. Mm -hmm. So, But that's what the finished block looks like and you would make 12 blocks like this. Okay. Then we start putting the blocks together with the sashing, so we can leave that one out. Let's see, we've got it tipped this way, don't we? And then you would cut sashing strips. Now the sashing strips are cut out of the same focus fabric. Okay. What that does is it makes these blocks, it makes the darker blue part of this look like it's floating on the quilt top. Okay, so Because the, the focus fabric is kind of blending in. So you would sew your sashing strips between your blocks. I have another one here. Let's move this up a little. Okay. Would that help? Yeah, I think so. And here's one with a sashing strip already sewn on. Let's use that one. Oops, we're going to have to turn our blocks. Okay. <laughs> You're the creator. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to turn them this way. Okay. There's no right or wrong. It's just that you need to do them all the same. Okay. Okay. Uh, so you're going to put your sashing strip in between your blocks. And you're going to do that for each row. You're going to have four rows of three blocks. Mm -hmm. And then the two sashing strips in between. And then once you get your rows all done, they're going to look like this with the sashing between. This one's already got it sewn in. I had it separate there because it's a little easier to see when it's not sewn in. Mm -hmm. But because it blends in so well with the, the focus fabric, that's what makes those blocks look like they're floating. Once you get that done, then you need to put sashing strips in between the rows of blocks. Okay. So here are our long strips. If you want to lay that one out. Right here? Sure. And these you would measure the row and then cut your sashing strip to fit the length of the row and sew those in between. You'd also need one on the top edge and one on the bottom edge. I don't know if we can reach this just to get the idea. There we go. Okay. So basically what you've got is your 12 blocks. You've got sashing in between all the blocks and all the way around the quilt. You want to create a space before you start putting that border on. Now we're back to our border strips that we cut. And those were the leftover pieces from the strip sets. And those just go onto the quilt. You can sew them together and they just fit on the quilt like that. Just piece them together end to end. Okay. Sew them onto the borders. At the corner, the way that we treat the corner is just to sew the bottom top ones on and then just add the side ones on down. There's no just special a square, treatment. Just a square border. Okay. Yeah. Of course, there'd be a sashing strip here too. Mm -hmm. That's basically the whole quilt and it's so fast and it's so easy. It's just a very fun quilt to do. And the fabric is going to make it look completely different when you change the fabric. Exactly. But I love these colors. It's kind of an underwater look, I think. It is. Yeah, maybe that's why I like it. I maybe. like to be underwater. <laughs> Tropical. <laughs> right, right. Let's take a look at some of the other quilts that you brought. This one is interesting. It's a, a green and white. We'll just show part yeah. of it here. That one's just kind of monochromatic greens, and then it's hand quilted. It just kind of shows the difference between the machine quilting. The other ones are machine quilted. This one has been quilted by hand. But just, it's a soft, um, kind of a quiet looking quilt. Even though it's scrappy, it doesn't jump out at you or. So it might depend on, on how big your stash is of a particular color. Certain color. Yeah, right. So if you have a color that you use a lot, like I use the teals and the purples, mm -hmm. that's probably where I'd start. You probably have a lot to make a quilt then. <laughs> right. I always have like one strip left. What do I do with it? Oh, Can't exactly. throw it out. Oh, no, no. <laughs> and they multiply in your cabinet. They do. This is uh, 30s reproduction prints. Okay. And this was just a strictly a strap, scrap quilt. This was a fat quarter quilt. This one was scraps. Okay. Um, she just used all her scraps and stripped them together and put them with that little soft yellow fabric. It makes a really nice baby quilt or a real soft looking calm quilt again. And this one is machine quilted. Oh, this look at the back. This one is machine quilted. <laughs> and I think, I don't know if that's a 30s, 50s. Looks like it's I'm not sure. Yeah, vintage, we'll vintage. call it. <laughs> and let's take a look at this one. And here it is again in the brights. And this one's machine quilted. And this one's a little more wild and it kind of jumps out at you. But it's a fun for a, a kid's room or a lap quilt for watching TV or whatever. 
but this is really, a, a, rather than scrap, this is more color coordinated. This one is. Like your purple, your black, More of a green. controlled scrappy right. kind of situation. For, for controlled <laughs> people. <laughs> so. <laughs> we do have control issues with some of this stuff. But yeah, she just chose uh, lots of fun quilt or fabrics that went together for this one. This one, I believe, was fat quarters also to make this oh, quilt. OK. All right. Well, these are really great, Lynn. I appreciate you coming and showing this technique. It sure looks easy. It's very easy. It's a lot of fun. Well, Thanks thank, for having me. Thank you so much. And be sure and join me on my next show when I'll bring you some more quilting ideas. For information on today's main demonstration, call 1-800-248-K. That's 1-800-248-5293. Or write to us at Kay's Quilting Friends, Post Office Box 456, West Branch, Michigan, 48661. Please remember to specify the program number. Kay's Quilting Friends is brought to you in part by Genomi America, Clover Needlecraft, Odd Light Technology, and Lazy Girl Designs. Our thanks for joining us for this edition of Kay's Quilting Friends. We hope the ideas shared with you in this program will make your quilting more enjoyable. Please join us again on the next Kay's Quilting Friends. <laughs>